Hey, hello, good evening and welcome. Carl Monson here of Expats Portugal with The Portugal Show. One of my two daily outings. This, of course, The Portugal Show, 10 o'clock Lisbon time. And in the morning at 9 a.m. Lisbon time is the Good Morning Portugal Show, of course, where we uh, get together with the expat community. In the morning, yeah, Good Morning Portugal is really for people who already live here primarily, although lots of people, uh, people who want to come to Portugal do tune in. And, of course, Portuguese people who are around the world as part of the Portuguese diaspora tune in to find out what's going on in their beloved home country. Uh, we see, and that's our growing community in the mornings. In the evening, it's a little bit different because we can reach out to a few more of our friends across the pond, across the Atlantic, and talk about life, a future life in Portugal, and answer your questions. And tonight, I've got a couple of articles, a couple of great resources from the expatsportugal.com website. The first being why I live in Portugal. It's probably right to do them in this order. Why I live in Portugal. I'm going to work my way through that and uh, share that with you and throw in a few asides as somebody who's lived in Portugal for three years now, originally from Great Britain, from the UK, from uh, England specifically, and Devon, the county of Devon in the UK, and uh, having lived in Portugal now and loving it for the last three years. I'll chip in with my own personal observations as a uh, family man, a husband, a uh, father of three kids, one of them, well, father of five kids in total, three are here, uh, two of them have grown up and I've got a new young family here in Portugal, one of them born here, so we have that experience to draw on as well, and we've travelled fairly extensively, me and Mrs M around uh, the country, so we've got uh, a fair bit <laughs> to report on and share with you. So the first of the articles I want to go through tonight from expatsportugal.com is why I live in Portugal. The second is Portuguese citizenship. So I'll be reading through that as well. And of course, that's a big deal for those uh, my uh, brothers and sisters from the United Kingdom who have pretty much now a month um, to apply for citizenship residency here in Portugal, uh, because of course the, we're in the transition period. And um, when we uh, finally, uh, or when, I guess how I see it now is when they finally um, leave the EU, um, that uh, the, the, the status of the UK will be very different. So if, if you're thinking of coming to Portugal as a British person, you really need to get your skates on. It's best to do it now. And of course the advice, as when I spoke to the uh, British ambassador to Portugal the other day, the advice to all folks living in Portugal is to get your registration sorted out and your residency sorted out uh, as soon as you possibly can as well. So that's tonight's show, Portuguese citizenship and why I live in Portugal, resources from expatsportugal.com. Um, if you've got any questions about either of those as we are working our way through them, I'll do my best to answer them for you. And do shout out where you're from, who you are um, on the screen there. And it's a very good evening to you, Eric. Hola, boa noite to you. I am being kept company by a wonderful a bottle of white port uh, that I began uh, on Friday evening. And you'll be glad to know, <laughs> if you're interested in my health at all, that I still have most of the bottle, uh, starting off with a delightful um, Portuguese disc white port and tonic. And I shall be shifting from white port and orange juice, which um, is a bit of an experiment, I have to say. But uh, I remember um, back in the day in the UK, uh, port and lemon, I mean, British people do terrible things to food and drink, it has to be said, let's face it. Um, and port and lemon is a very popular drink. So I'm going to give it a go with uh, white port and citrus. And do forgive me that's, if that's a sacrilegious move uh, for any Portuguese people who are tuned in tonight. So quite quiet in the comments so far. Um, do shout out with any questions or just to say hi. It's lovely to hear from you uh, in the in the comments uh, section there, uh, whether you be listening via uh, Good Morning Portugal page or Expats Portugal pages on Facebook or, as we've been doing most recently, tuning in via YouTube, live on YouTube as well, uh, which has been great for us. We have a load of material on uh, YouTube if you want to uh, find out more about this sort of our approach basically to living in Portugal as expats. We have many videos uh, up there on our YouTube channel as well. Hola from Lydia Bassetti. Hello, Lydia. Um, great to hear from you this evening as well. Any questions you have about uh, Portugal, I will do my best to answer them. And of course, if you have any interest at all in moving to Portugal, it's a good idea to become a member at expatsportugal.com. You can join free and if you upgrade for a mere 25 euros, you get access to a whole bunch of premier uh, member benefits, which actually I might go through those tonight as well. So let me just have a quick sip of my white Porto, um, white port tonico, um, and then we'll get underway with those two articles. Why I live in Portugal, 
and Portuguese citizenship. Please just talk politely among yourselves for a moment. That really is a lovely drink. Okay, uh, comments coming in now. Um, Linda's here tonight as well. Hi, Linda, how are you? Hola. Very good, loving the Portuguese. And uh, Longo Iliana Casa. I'm really not sure what that means, but it's a lol from um, NY Unix Guru. Uh, how long have you been in your house? Is that is that a little <laughs> is that a little bit of a lockdown reference there? Um, I was allowed out earlier on today, but we're of, of course moving into the um, the public holiday lockdown. Um, hi, Steve. I'll come back to you in just a moment. Great to hear from you, Steve. Um, yeah, just to, just to let you know that here in Portugal, um, from when is it? Um, well, from from the 27th right through until the 2nd, there is no inter-municipality movement. I think that maybe is what uh, NY Unix Guru is referring to. And variously around the country, there are all sorts of curfews and lockdowns depending on the rate of um, infection, uh, the pace of infection. And um, Anadia, where I live actually, Anadia in, in the district of uh, Aveiro is doing pretty well. So um, we were able to go out this morning, do a bit of shopping, but pretty much, yeah, I think we should stay where we are. Um, now, oh dear, there's a massive lesson. Uh, sorry, not a massive. It does look like a lesson to me. Uh, there is a massive comment in Portuguese, which I think might be an advert um, for. Um, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know enough. My Portuguese isn't good enough. Maybe. Uh, an, oh, Philomena's here. Thank goodness for that. Philomena might be able to translate for me. Um, but certainly, Denise Senatos is uh, coming in with a, a comment um, that looks like an ad of some sort, and Philomena may be able to. Um, uh, translate that for me and, and tell me if I should bring my attention to that or not tonight. And it's a hola bon night from Philomena. Hello, Philomena. And really looking forward to your company on Friday for the return of the much loved Philomena Friday uh, here on, on the uh, well on the morning show on the Good Morning Portugal show. Uh, the scoop longo ilia na casa. I'm sorry you've spent so long in your house, maybe. I don't know. And you're just not letting it lie with the Portuguese there, are you? doesn't take much uh, to, to confuse me with the Portuguese. And uh, Steve, hey, Steve. Hola, boa noite. Chilly day here in Minneapolis. Yeah, um, it's been a – well, how has it been here? We've had some nice sun, actually. In the evenings, it's really cooling down now, as, as you might expect, uh, here in autumn slash winter uh, here in Portugal. But a beautiful day today, beautiful day um, out and about uh, and took a stroll in the park, took, took a lovely uh, – walk through a local park. It was, it was very quiet. It was very quiet, but it was very beautiful in the autumnal sunshine. Uh, Doreen Rays is here. So yeah, good evening to you, Steve. Great to have your company. Uh, you may, of course, be interested in why I live in Portugal and Portuguese citizenship, which we're going to cover tonight. Good evening. Looking forward to learning more about Portugal from you. I'll do my best, Doreen. I really will. And uh, let's just see, before we go into those articles, are there any more comments? Oh, is, it is an advert about interest rates. Well, maybe I, <laughs> Lydia, your Portuguese is good. Um, uh, and you're also saying it's spitting snow in the North Georgia mountains, which sounds very picturesque and romantic, but probably gets on your nerves after a, a while, <laughs> I suspect. Um, when, it, when, it, when it sets hard and goes all grey and slushy, ultimately. Uh, Chile in Austin, too. Brr, yeah, there we go, Linda. We are all, it's all cooling down, isn't it, in the uh, Northern Hemisphere here. So let's take a look, shall we? Um, I'll share it on the screen here so you can read with me if you wish. Just one cheeky little um, comment to come in there from uh, Ruchi J. Um, good evening. Balmy here in Sao Paulo. Okay, all right, very good. <laughs> and uh, Lydia's um, not that brilliant at Portuguese, but she does have a translate button. So th thank you very much. And Rushi, great to have you here from Balmy, Sao Paulo as well. Um, but uh, Rushi can speak uh, Portuguese. Okay, so let's take a look at why I live in Portugal. Let's just make our way through that slowly while sipping on port wine here uh, with a bit of tonic mixed with it. And that's what I'll be doing. So let's consider the whys of living in Portugal, uh, which you can see on the screen there. And uh, I'll just dim the lights a little bit, take it in the background there so you can really, yeah, that's better, isn't it? You can see the article and less of me, actually. Um, so why live in Portugal? What are we seeing there? We're seeing, just like my backdrop, I would say that's uh, Porto there, open to challenge, but I would say that picture is Porto. And um, one of our partners on their final counter countdown to Brexit consultations, talk to us now, say Blevins Franks. Uh, why live in Portugal over other amazing countries? Unless you are moving to a new country, 
because of a particular job opportunity uh, or a job or an opportunity, you may be questioning why Portugal over other countries. Uh, what makes it a great place to live? Here are some points to add to your list when considering Portugal as your new home. And of course, there are Portuguese people here tuned in tonight, as we can see. And uh, you may like to add to this list as native Portuguese people. Uh, did you know these facts about Portugal? Uh, Portugal's official name is República Portuguesa, and the official language is Portuguese. That's pretty basic stuff, isn't it? But, but quite sort of prescient, given that to tomorrow is Independence Day, uh, public holiday, independence from um, Spain, uh, some 500 or so years ago, but still celebrated here in Portugal. Uh, Portugal's population is um, 10.277 million, and that was the 2018 estimate. And the total area is 92.4 square kilometers. So it actually, there are some states of the United States that are bigger, I think. Many, probably quite a few, in fact, uh, than Portugal. Approximately 16% of the population is aged 0 to 14 years. 66% uh, is the proportion aged 15 to 64 years. And 18% aged 65 and over. The largest population age group is 35 to 39 years there are 111.2 people per square kilometer in portugal it's funny when you hear it like that isn't it the um population density and of course you know there are that's an average um in you'll you'll certainly feel like you're in a, a bustling thoroughly modern city in porto or lisbon and as, as you head out if you let's say you go um east into castelo branco uh, or the uh, wilds of the Coimbra region, even in, in central Portugal, you will feel it's a lot less than that. Uh, so this compares with 410.68 in the Netherlands, to give you a comparison, 275.6 people per square kilometre in the UK, 118.4 in Paris, 92.29 uh, in Spain, 68.56 in Ireland, and 33.27 in the USA. That's an interesting figure, isn't it? Uh, you may agree over there in, in America. I imagine that uh, America is quite um, closely, densely populated. But of course, it's a huge country, isn't it? Uh, with with vast areas of very few people. Um, so actually, Portugal looks quite <laughs> crowded, doesn't it? <laughs> like um, three, almost four times more the population density. But seriously, um, there are so many places here where you will feel like you're in the middle of nowhere and enjoy the, enjoy the wildness and, um, and not loneliness for sure, but um, the um, splendid, what, splendid isolation, you could, could call it. Uh, the current president, who is, of course, um, going to be facing a, um, a bit of a battle for his position in the new year, is Marcelo Rebelo de Souza, and the current prime minister, this needs updating, is Antonio Costa. So I found something on our site here uh, on expatsportugal.com. It is, of course, Antonio Costa. Uh, who has had his work cut out, of course, in this last uh, eight or nine months. And um, I'll let the Portuguese people with their comments say how well they think he's done. That'd be quite interesting, actually. Let's let the, the Portuguese people who really understand the culture tell you what they think of both um, uh, Marcelo, as he's known, the president, and Antonio Costa, Senor Costa, uh, tonight. If you will, please, Portuguese people. Uh, the people, let's look at the people now who we've just been talking about. The Portuguese are generally extremely helpful and friendly. Of course, um, a big generalization there, but one that I have to say I've found to be true. Now, not gushing at all in their helpfulness and friendliness, but as soon as the moment arises, as soon as the opportunity is there um, in an otherwise, you know, fairly straight laced and, and calm people going about their business kind of atmosphere. But as soon as you need help or there's an opportunity for friendliness, you will feel that for sure. So not gushing or overbearing in any way, um, but still, when it counts, very helpful and friendly folks, in my experience, uh, they'll often go out of their way to assist a stranger and will willingly share their knowledge and their passion for all things Portugal and Portuguese. Uh, that also is true in my experience. Nearly all the younger generation have learned English at school and will be delighted to have an opportunity to practice. Away from the tourist areas, the older generation will have little or no English and therefore it's recommended to have some knowledge of Portuguese, even at just a basic level. Um, yeah, that is, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of truth in that. And uh, what I've noticed, what we've noticed as a couple, uh, my wife speaks very good French, having lived in France for a few years. The older folks in Portugal, certainly in Central, 
And I think it's true as you go further up north as well, did learn French at school as well. So the older folks often do speak a bit of French because, of course, the joke is that the third largest city of the third largest Portuguese city is Paris because there are many people, there are many Portuguese people in the Portuguese diaspora around the world, but a very intense concentration in and around Paris. And um, you will you will um, hear par uh, French being spoken um, in the summer months here, and a lot of the old folks, as I say, were taught French at school. So that's useful. If you've got that up your sleeve, it can be very helpful. But uh, yeah, obviously, make an effort. Learn the language if you're coming here. Uh, the goodwill of making an effort will go a long way. The Portuguese are also very family orientated and it's not unusual to see several generations of a family sharing a restaurant meal together. Not only that, and certainly not recently, I suppose, in many ways, but there are these wonderful picnic areas in Portugal. And again, this is something that um, Portuguese uh, viewers, listeners might like to comment upon. Um, but it seems that the Portuguese are a very outdoor culture and do a lot of entertaining uh, cafes, restaurants, picnic areas in public places, um, rather than necessarily so much at home. It seems to me that the um, the home is a little bit private in many ways, almost like a dormitory. And life is, because of the climate, you know, largely, um, certainly in the summer, you know, central and northern, but certainly all year round in the south, the the, um, the the climate is so conducive to socializing outdoors. So I think that has led possibly to the home being quite private, almost a dormitory, as I say, and you will see multi-generational gatherings. <laughs> That's if it's allowed at the moment um, at restaurants, uh, cafes, and in the lovely uh, Parque de Marendas, the picnic areas. I have really loved that, finding out about the picnic areas in Portugal. And uh, they the one down the road from me, um is um like it's like being in a, in a in an orchard i mean it's generally i think they're plane trees because they traditional plane trees of portugal that offer a lovely amount of shade and they're well established by lovely people who thought way ahead of their time and bestowed a gift of shade upon future generations but there will be the the trees for shade there will be benches and there may well be a performance area at one end for the festus and the festa season but when the Portuguese people arrive, um, sometimes in the in a coach load, um, there will be an in, an incredible. <laughs> it's not it's not a picnic in in my understanding of British picnic. You know there is I don't know how it happens, but the tablecloths come out almost like a candelabra. You know ice buckets, beer, wine, warm food, cold food. Something for everyone, something that the kids enjoy, something that the oldies enjoy. It's a feast, a feast that gets laid out in these picnic areas. It's quite extraordinary. Um, and they, as, as it says there, as I've just read out, uh, it's not unusual to see gener generations of a family, several generations of a family sharing a restaurant meal together, as it's not unusual to see them tucking into a massive and leisurely picnic uh, with plenty of booze as well, I have to say. So football, history, culture and coffee – are among other Portuguese passions. Put simply to me, actually, uh, one time by a taxi driver, the three Fs, uh, football, Fado and Fatima, uh, was my taxi driver's estimation of the three principal passions of Portugal. Um, but here are 10 more reasons uh, to live in the country. Number one, actually, before I read that, let me just have another little sip of the uh, Portonico and um, see who's who else is here this evening. Mmm, that's delicious. Okay, so I can see lots of lovely comments. I'll come back to all of those, I promise you, um, when I've finished reading these um, 10 more reasons and um, a few other things to consider, uh, which will bring us to a conclusion on this particular article from expatsportugal.com, Why Live in Portugal. So number one, safe and secure. Portugal came third in the Global Peace Index 2019. New Zealand was second and Iceland was first. And um, I wonder, among you who have lists that had Iceland, uh, I'm not knocking Iceland at all, but, I, you know, I don't know many people. I know, I know a lot of people who would like to go to New Zealand or who have been and absolutely love the place. And I know one person, actually, who went, who's been to Iceland, but that's because his wife was working there. And, I mean, having been there, he the photographs that, that he's putting on Instagram are quite extraordinary. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think of Iceland as a top destination. That might just be me, but there you go. Um, it came th third, did Portugal in the Global Peace Index with New Zealand and Iceland 
um, in second and first, respectively. Uh, interesting points there. The environment is number two. Uh, Portugal came third in the Good Country Index of most environmentally friendly countries in the world for planet and climate. Uh, number three, the low cost of living. Portugal is the second least expensive country in Europe after Bulgaria. Um, well, uh, Portugal has a wealth of affordable properties and land to buy or rent, whether you want a charming fixer-upper or a modern low-maintenance house. That's true. There's an incredible um, a mixture of, of types of properties uh, here in Portugal. And one of the real um, hazards, I could call it, is when you drive around, there are so many uh, fixer-uppers around and, and quite a few abandoned properties, and it's very possible to fall in love with several houses a day and with an unlimited budget you'd probably just be buying them and wanting to do them up it's really beautiful uh, houses with with obvious and clear history in beautiful parts of you know of the countryside for example and in and in the city um but yeah you, you have to be careful um not to fall in love too often with with the amount of beautiful um portuguese properties that would appear to be available uh, and we do have some um portuguese property to look at uh, on our website as well if you want to take a look and we are developing relationships with a number of real estate agents, with estate agents um, who we trust to find you somewhere if you are looking in Portugal. So um, drop us a line about that. You see my email address is on the screen there um, if you want us to connect you with a reputable uh, real estate agent uh, here, here in this country. Uh, yes, I am broadcasting live uh, from Portugal tonight. So yes, here in this country. Uh, the weather is the best in Europe. That's interesting. Um, that's probably a talk for another night. But what can I tell you about the weather uh, being the best in Europe? Pretty much uh, 300 or so days of sunshine a year um, is the claim that's made. And obviously that might vary a little bit from year to year, um, but uh, it's a pretty good estimate. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it, 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 another thing I've heard about Portugal, and um, thank you to Darren for this, who, who told me this, I'll never forget. It's the it's the cool country, as in coldish country, with a very hot sun, and that hot sun does show its face on a very regular basis. So it can be a bit cool, um, but when it's sunny, it's beautifully sunny. And here on the Atlantic, you know, with that Atlantic advantage, you have the most beautiful blue skies, uh, which are so good for the soul and the spirit. I find uh, healthcare is world class and relatively inexpensive at number six in our ten more reasons to live in Portugal. And uh, getting around is easy, as both the road and train infrastructure are excellent. And I would attest to that. Um, there are an, uh, there's a, a, a network of very good toll roads, um, which can be, if you're not used to it, can, can feel a little bit on the expensive side. Um, but they are amazing. I mean, you get them to yourself uh, basically a lot of the time, and they are the most beautifully engineered and perfect road, almost hand manicured um, of the toll roads come off the toll roads, go on the older um, big roads of Portugal uh, that connect north to south, and you get another experience. Um, and possibly not as well maintained, but full of rich culture. Um, the ones that the truckers use, you know, the, the, the Route 66 of Portugal, uh, the IC2 that's not so far from me, the N1, uh, they are amazing roads to travel. They are the road trip roads of Portugal, I would say. Uh, the trains... Amazing, the Alpha Pendula system that uh, the um, country is united uh, from Algarve up to Porto uh, by the most amazing high-speed train. Really good value as well. I'm often surprised by um, how good the value is of using the trains, especially so locally. Um, I live on a I live on that main line, and uh, I also use the regional trains, and uh, they are excellent value too. Uh, popping to from where I am down to Coimbra in about 30 minutes up to Aveira in about 40 minutes and I think that's costing me um around three euros I think for the single for the single journey which is pretty good isn't it um number eight there are generous tax incentives for certain professions and retirees worth worth noting worth bearing in mind the beaches are spectacular they truly are uh, that's number nine and there is a multitude of interesting historical cultural and scenic places to visit. That is an understatement. I mean, even saying multitude, but we, uh, we've we just started something called the Portugal 100, which, <clears throat> forgive me, I am um, a little behind with that, but I did appeal to people to, to 
give us a list, you know, in the pandemic times, let's create a list of places we want to go to when movement becomes a little bit easier or those lovely places that people can, will come and visit when they uh, eventually get here in the country. Portugal 100, we, uh, within a day or two, we'd e easily got into double figures way up to 60 or 70. Um, and they, they were coming in thick and fast. I mean, it, just around every corner is interesting historical, cultural, and uh, scenic delights in Portugal. And I just uh, I, I shared on the on the Good Morning Portugal show this morning, the government have decided um, to give people a little bit of a treat. And the museums, galleries, and places of special um, cultural interest are free on Sunday. They're making them free. Uh, free admission on Sundays and, and public holidays. So that's a good move as well. So you can enjoy all of them uh, for nothing on the right days as well. And even when it's not free, um, there's still really good value. I mean, this country, generally speaking, is pretty awesome value. Certainly, um, you know, you'll find this in terms of the comparison uh, we're coming from the UK or from North America. Last but not least at number 10, there is the marvellous food and wine to suit all tastes and budgets. Uh, that's true as well. Yeah, pretty pretty remarkable. Um, a few other things to consider. Let's go into those. Uh, so buying a car in Portugal is much more expensive than most other countries in Europe. New cars are taxed heavily and used cars hold their value. That's very true. And um, we have just recently created a partnership with ACP, Autom Automobile Club de Portugal, the ACP, well worth joining, 100 euros for the year, which will include your um, roadside assistance. Um, so that's incredible value. Not just that, it's half the price if you don't have roadside and you get in the most incredible set of benefits as well that extend into your health, uh, uh, you know, an amount of health insurance, uh, visits from doctors for, for 10 euros, um, household services like plumbers and electricians, uh, access to, they'll help you broker decent car insurance. So that ACP um, membership is well worth checking out. And of course, we give you a bit of a discount if you're a member of uh, Expats Portugal. So uh, go to the Perks. Let me just tell you what part of the um, website that's on. Yeah, go, go to Perks and Freebies on our website and you'll see there um, how to get involved with the ACP with a stack of benefits, not least how they can help you with the importation of vehicles, which is a big deal for some people. I mean, that's a that's a very, and this is what we're going to talk about next here. Uh, you can matriculate a car from another country, but do check the requirements as this can be expensive. It can indeed, the ACP went into that on a webinar we did with them last week, which is on our YouTube channel, but get their help. If you're thinking of matriculating a car from another country, get the help of the ACP and get a discount on ACP membership by going through expatsportugal.com. However, whilst the cost of car ownership is high, this is more than offset by the generally low cost of living in Portugal. Yes, as it turns out, the things that um, shock people in terms of price uh, are the um, unholy trinity of, of uh, the cost of cars, uh, the cost of electricity and the cost of spectacles. Yes, glasses. Who knew? Um, and I never needed glasses until I came to Portugal. And I'm dreading it. Um, but that's another special <laughs> to be recorded, isn't it? My journey. Uh, finding spectacles. But anyway, yeah, those three things um, do shock people. But uh, as it says there, um, you know, if you offset those things against the generally low cost of living in Portugal, you're going to be fine. Uh, in many rural areas of Portugal, internet reception is still poor. Um, I would question that. It's getting better all the time. But yeah, fair play. I mean, in some very rural areas, I guess that is a, um, a sacrifice you make uh, for, for the... Um, the beautiful solitude that I mentioned before. If you need the internet, it's worthwhile to check the reception in an area before you decide to buy or rent a property. Absolutely, because there ain't much you can do about it once you've made the commitment. So yes, do. If that's important to you, if your work life relies on the internet as mine does, you've got to put that first. And I always have done, you know, you just make sure you can get coverage um, in the home that you're moving to. Everyone, of course, has a mobile phone and most will have a package offering cheap or free calls and texts within Portugal, uh, calls to foreign. I'm laughing because of my um, run-in with Vodafone, which is still ongoing, but uh, uh, the least said about that, the better right now. Uh, calls to foreign numbers can still be expensive and might deter someone from calling you back worth getting a Portuguese number, and that's very easy and straightforward to do. House insulation and central heating are relatively new concepts in Portugal. Although Portugal is a warm country, it can get cold at night, as I was saying earlier on, and this is the time for year, time of year for that for sure. And due to a lack of insulation and poor building quality, home interiors can become 
very cold and a little bit damp, it has to be said, too. Older houses were also built to keep out the hot sun, which is fine in summer but not great in winter. Things to bear in mind, okay? Uh, since December 2013, it is a legal requirement for all properties that are advertised commercially for sale or rent to have an energy performance certificate, the EPC, among other things. This will calculate the thermal efficiency of the property. Buildings with a construction license issued prior to 2006 must have an energy certificate but are not required to meet any particular grade. Buildings with a construction license issued after 4th of July 2006 must meet the standards of grade B or above. The top rating is A+, plus, the lowest rating is G. If you are considering to buy or rent a property with a rating of C or lower, you may have heating and insulation issues. And bear in mind what I said about the cost of electricity. So there you, there you go, expatsportugal.com. Why live in Portugal? A very quick guide there, um, just to give you a, a sense of things, probably to confirm your bias, I suspect, uh, for many people who might be tuned in already. So let's have a look at some of those uh, lovely comments. And of course, yes, remember to support us at uh, expatsportugal.com with an upgrade, if you will, for a mere 25 euros. Okay, so um, yes, NY Unix Guru, uh, are you practical Portuguese? I'm practicing my Portuguese. Well, thanks for doing that on me. <laughs> and New York Unix Guru, um, Ruchi G um, is, um, I think, smiling at uh, my reference to them, uh, obviously speaking Portuguese from Sao Paulo in Brazil. Uh, Fiona Baker, green wine and the best ice cream parlor in Lisbon. Uh, they must go on my Portugal 100 list. I think uh, you were talking about the Vinha Verde, and I would, I'm going to challenge you there. I think the best ice cream parlor is the one in, what's it called? Is it called Cozy? Um, up in, in, in the lanes of Coimbra. Fiona, if and when we meet here in Portugal, we'll have to take each other to those respective ice cream parlors and have it out once and for all. Um, sorry, Long Island in the house, says Iso Chest. That is an idiomatic expression. I have never heard it before. Which is that then? Um, tell me, tell me which one is the idiomatic expression. Uh, Nuno Miranda, Bonoi Tatorj. Hello, Nuno. Great to have you here. And uh, Charles says, there are many reasons, but you have to find yours. That's so true. Come to Portugal, do the tour, find your own reasons to fall in love with the place, as well as the list that we've started you off with there. Good point, Charles, um, over there in the States. How are you? Um, the older people also speak French because they've been immigrants in France and other French-speaking countries. Emigration numbers were high in the 60s. I feel I mean, that's true. That's right, isn't it? And I've heard that people walked. Uh, so difficult was it at times to get um, work in Portugal that some people just gave up and went to France and basically hitchhiked um, and made their way over there to France. Some incredible stories, I would have thought, um, in the long grass of the culture that would be fascinating to find out about. Uh, Nuno, Miranda, Nuno, uh, we love to go outside with our family and friends in the picnic areas. Uh, you have to try one near Gouvier, uh, Senora de Schwerge, uh, one of the best that I know. Yes, these picnic areas are fantastic. Sometimes they've got a river beach next to them, haven't they? Which makes them all the more attractive and fantastic. Oh, here we go again uh, with uh, NY Unix Guru. Uh, I tried to, when, when NY Unix Guru first joined us, I was trying to, I thought that was like an African name, and I was trying to pronounce it as Neunix, Unix, N Unix Guru, uh, but I think I've got it now, NY Unix Guru. Pensia que Portugal seria menos lotado de que os Look, you're going to have to stop it now, NY, and at least give me both um, the translation and you trying out your Portuguese on me. Um, <laughs> if you will. The interior region has a low population, absolutely, uh, points out Nuno. Um, <laughs> I think I could do this one. Muitos apartamentos lá. Yeah, so plenty of flats uh, here in Portugal. Are you guys currently on lockdown? Hiya, Paula, Paula Diamonds. Um, yeah, um, but variously. Um, you know, around the world, some governments are creating a tiered system. Um, so depending on the level of infection, the rate of infection, there's different levels of restriction. Uh, where I am currently, you can um, go about your business until a certain time of the evening, until the morning, and then at weekends, uh, we are, um, I, you know, I, I just think that the phrase lockdown is overplaying it a bit. Um, you know, lockdown would, to me, mean like, you know, a, a very serious 
limitation of freedom. Um, you know, it, it's more of a limitation on freedom than I would like, but I understand why it's happening. Um, and um, it's it, it, yeah, the, the lockdown just terrifies people, doesn't it? It's, it's not helpful language, but there are restrictions on movement. If, if I reframe it like that, um, currently in some places from one in the afternoon at weekends uh, until five the next morning. So yeah, variously around the country, Paula, it does vary um, about uh, the amount of limitation. But the uh, figures are good, I'm hearing. And um, when I, uh, um, I, I'm checking out the news, I'm seeing that the, the, the desired effect of the lockdown um, seems to be happening. So um, I hope that answers your question there. Uh, Doreen Ray's, I've been to Iceland three times. It's amazing, but not enough warm, sunny days for me to live there. And it's very expensive, yeah. So a uh, holiday location then, Doreen. Um, yeah, it must just be me then who doesn't really know about the Iceland thing. A thousand and one reasons to love Portugal, but the public health service isn't one of them, unfortunately. So it sounds like Susan has not had a very good um, experience of that. Um, I'd, Susan, have you have you t shared that with us? Have you talked about that on the expatsportugal.com forum? I'm sure people would be interested to know about your experience. Um, I think the private health system here um, is is priced very competitively compared to the American systems. So, um, yeah, I guess it's a matter of finding some sort of hybrid that works for you in the middle there. Um, but I'm sorry to hear that you've had a, a, a poor experience of the health system here. Um, Linda, so many great things. I cannot wait to get there. Fantastic. Uh, Linda, uh, depends on the city you are. Some of them you can't travel to and other ones only to work or special cases. Absolutely. No, no. Um, oh, here he goes again. Uh, quiero ter uma fazenda la. Are you looking for a job, maybe, uh, over here? Uh, no, no. Uh, also, in the weekends, in some cities, you have to go back home after 1 p.m. Yeah, that's been the case for us, uh, I think, until recently. Um, we've, we've moved in our position in the, um, uh, in, the, in the sort of league of um, districts, basically. Uh, my wife is from the USA, continues. No, no, we married last year, and we're living in Serra de Estrela region, say, a beautiful part of uh, Portugal. No, no, realmente. It's an ongoing Portuguese conversation, isn't it? <laughs> For NY Unix guru, um, rural internet in US is poor too. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? I think it's, you know, it's the same in the UK where I'm from. Uh, it's obviously going to be better in the city, but it's also going to improve consistently, I think, in the countryside as well. Uh, but night from Sapphire, who's here, everybody, uh, certainly get some fantastic um, cultural insight from... Um, from Sapphira, our friend Joel, and someone is using a Brazilian translator. You've been busted, NY Unix guru. Stop it. You, Philomena has figured it out. I think you're just putting everything you want to say through the old Google Translate, which puts it into Brazilian Portuguese. And you have been busted by Philomena, um, who you can ask about the language. You can get one-to-one -one lessons with Philomena. It's a service she offers. Uh, Eric is saying to Sapphira, we're worried about... Your perfect attendance street might be in jeopardy. Certainly not. He's here tonight, everyone. Uh, we are starting our D7 journey and love watching your show. Cheers from Brazil, says Rushi. Um, I'm so pleased. Thanks, Rushi. I think this is the first time you said hi, isn't it, tonight? Uh, you're most welcome, and let us know how we can help you best. Okay, and let's go into this next article about Portuguese citizenship uh, here on the Portugal Show this evening with me, Carl Munson of expatsportugal.com. And, uh, of course, we are surrounded by lovely uh, expats, uh, w wannabe expats, Portuguese people, a real cross-section of people um, in Portugal and beyond who will also chip in with their thoughts and opinions uh, as we go through this section of our website called Portuguese Citizenship Now and uh, how to apply for Portuguese citizenship. Uh, are you interested in applying for Portuguese citizenship this page of our site outlines who's eligible, the benefits of living in Portugal, some of which we've touched on in our in our earlier article there. But uh, this is the, the specific benefits of living in Portugal with citizenship and the process for applying it, which we'll also talk about here as well. Um, not a massive amount to go through, but uh, just a little bit of a, a taster, uh, an amuse-bouche for you um, to, um, to help you and just give you a little bit more knowledge. Uh, about the process and what you might be up against here. So who is eligible for Portuguese citizenship? Citizens living in a country within the EU or EFTA, uh, the European Union, can apply for Portuguese citizenship with relative ease. That applies to you Brits for another month now. Non-EU, non-European Union or EFTA citizens have been able 
able to gain citizenship more readily since 2006, following a relaxation of the country's legislation. Following alterations to the Portuguese Nationality Act, non-EU nationals can secure citizenship after six years residing in the country or through marriage after three years residing here. Certain people and demographics can apply for citizenship in Portugal sooner, some of whom we'll discuss in more detail shortly after I've had another sip of this wonderful Ferreira White. Look, it sounds like I'm being sponsored um, by these folks. I'm not. Uh, let me just give you a close-up, though, because I do do like this. Um, there you go. Ferreira Porto Branco White Port, uh, currently with a bit of tonic in the glass. I'm just going to have a quick sip. That's beautiful. Totally unprofessional, but really delicious. Um, so back to the Portuguese citizenship article. Uh, no, actually, I'm not being sponsored. Uh, more's the pity. Um, but something like this, a beautiful bottle of um, white port, which is currently my favorite, um, with the um, official label on it, with its own serial number, the guarantee of a port wine, 5.99 euros at my local supermarket. It's a great drop. Um, so where was I? Oh, yes, uh, we'll discuss it in more detail shortly. And here we are again. What are the benefits of Portuguese citizenship? We've already discussed what differs between Portuguese permanent residency and Portuguese citizenship above. And um, it's also important to look at the benefits of Portuguese citizenship as a whole. As a Portuguese citizen, you'll also be able to do the following. So here we go. Get a Portuguese passport, which is ranked number three in the Passports Index for its mobility score. I'm, I'm imagining that's good. <laughs> I, I suspect it is. Uh, buy a commercial property, gain full-time employment or self-employment without the need for a Portuguese work permit, receive P Portuguese social security benefits and pensions, and partake in education and study. So the principal benefits there of Portuguese citizenship. Dual citizenship is entirely possible to obtain dual citizenship allowing you to apply for Portuguese citizenship without having to relinquish your citizenship of your home country. It's important to check with your home country to clarify whether they allow dual citizenship first. If your home country does not permit this and you are serious about gaining Portuguese citizenship, you may be asked to renounce your exist existing citizenship first. I wonder how many times I'm going to say the word citizenship here. Somebody might like to count. Uh, how to become a Portuguese citizen. The Portuguese Nationality Act allows overseas nationals to obtain Portuguese citizenship in the following ways. Via naturalization. The most common way to acquire citizenship in Portugal is through naturalization. This means that you will, you will need to reside in Portugal for a minimum of six years. You can apply for permanent residency in Portugal after five years, but this does not offer the same benefits as, as citizenship as we've also discussed before in this article. Those seeking citizenship through naturalization will need to be over the age of 18, have a criminal record free of convictions, punishable of three or more years imprisonment in the eyes of the Portuguese law, and have obtained an A2 level of Portuguese. The application needs to be made to the Portuguese Ministry of Justice, the Instituto dos Registros e do Notariado, the IRN. So that's one way. Uh, via the Golden Visa Scheme, Portugal is one of the several European nations to offer a residency permit to those who invest in Portugal. Uh, and you can see the criteria for this in, in our webinar with our wonderful uh, partner, lawyer Daniel Reyes of Reyes Pelicano, also on our YouTube channel. Uh, this can be in various guises, including job creation, investment in local cultural research and development, R&D, or even acquiring property. Those entering Portugal via the Golden Visa Scheme may remain in Portugal for up to five years, after which they can apply for permanent residency. And after six years, they can apply for full citizenship. By marrying a Portuguese national. Now, this is an interesting way to do it, isn't it? Uh, possibly a little bit risky. Um, you know, maybe fall in love first and then think about it rather than trying to fall in love so you can get citizenship. Um, there's a film about that, isn't there? Uh, by marrying a Portuguese national, individuals that marry a Portuguese national have the option of applying for Portuguese citizenship once they have married or have been married for at least three years. You don't have to reside in Portugal during this time, which is a requirement that differs from several other EU nations. Further information from the IRN website. If you have Portuguese parents or grandparents, that's another way. It's possible to apply for Portuguese citizenship via origin. There are three common scenarios in which citizenship by origin is made possible. If one or both of your parents are Portuguese, if you're born overseas but have a Portuguese grandparent, if you're born in Portugal to parents without citizenship at the time, 
but they had been living legally in Portugal for five years prior to your birth. Now, this is quite complex. I understand that. And uh, you may like to look at our business directory and get the help of um, uh, Gilda Pereira at uh, AI Immigrant, or Hai Immigrant. As it's, I think I, I, this is a running joke between the pair of us, um, me and Gilda. But uh, I will give you a very quick look at the business directory, um, which um, I think it's useful to know about because of the complexity of these things. But this is just a taster about citizenship. Anything that you need further clarification on, seek the help of a professional and our partners uh, in these respective areas. So via adoption, if you've been adopted by Portuguese parents, it's possible to apply for Portuguese citizenship. The only stipulation is that adopted applicants need to be aged under 18 at the time of writing no legal provision exists for portuguese people adopting someone aged 18 and over can you adopt people who are over 18 anyway via agreements with the former portuguese colonies oh i see they've become over 18 um via relationships with former portuguese colonies there are several long-term relationships be between portugal and nations that are former portuguese territories one of the main benefits of these relationships is that residents of these former colonies can apply for portuguese citizenship these territories include Sotoma and principe Principe uh, Macau, if born under the period of Portuguese rule, Mozambique, Cape Verde, uh, Angola, Guinea-Bissau, Portuguese India, if born under the period of Portuguese rule. Amazing, isn't it, that, um, oh, what's that, what, Goa um, was part of Portuguese India, and of course, East Timor. There's Rajin in Pelicano, who I mentioned before, and uh, let's go to our uh, business directory just very quickly so you can see the calibre of some of the people you're dealing with. Uh, there, of course, Raisin Pelicano, um, who can help you with all aspects of visas and so on. And then if we go into the immigration uh, migration consulting, you will see the um, AE there. Uh, hey, uh, Assessoria Migratoria. Um, so these they're the first migration agency in Portugal who specialize in helping people with their move to Portugal from anywhere in the world. Our mantra, hey. Uh, breaking boundaries since 2014. There you go. Um, Gilda is your contact there. And um, <clears throat> she's also a pretty keen photographer and sends me beautiful photographs of uh, Portugal, which I feature as my opening screen on the Good Morning Portugal show, which you can catch at 9 a.m. every weekday morning. OK, so back to some comments. The challenge has been accepted. Um, that was our guide, by the way, to... Um, what was that? Uh, the business, the um, oh, citizenship in Portugal, and um, I just took a brief detour into our business directory there, um, which I hope was sharing on the screen. So I know I'm not eligible. <laughs> no, you're already here, um, Sapphiro. Uh, sorry, English is better for this forum. Yes, NYN Unix Guru and um, Susan Renshaw says, uh, Susan again, thanks so much for your response. No, I haven't posted in the forum regarding our experience. Uh, regarding health but we'll do now that will be really helpful to people susan um fiona baker and maybe help you as well you know with, with some other suggestions uh, as, as to what you might do so you can get some sort of better satisfaction and and uh, security around that um okay challenge accepted says fiona the the ice cream parlor challenge is on fiona is taking me to lisbon i'm taking her to coimbra fantastic coimbra was the place we didn't get so yeah come i'll meet you there and, and the ice creams are on me uh, to visit whilst um, visiting my daughter in Lisbon. So, okay, it's on um, the the ice cream challenge there, uh, Lisbon versus Coimbra. Eric got a bit distracted with the dogs. Oh, I see, before the show started, um, and uh, Eric's glad to see you here. So there you go. Um, that's tonight's sharing of two of our articles from the um, from, from the expatsportugal.com archives, and um, you will find that in our a news and articles section and uh, you'll also find all sorts of stuff on there real estate uh, the webinars and live streams that are coming up and uh, it's a social actually this thursday night that's just, that's just coming up our new ask our expats team a few of them well as many of them as as, as uh, are available will be with you on thursday evening um, with on the ground experience of what it's like to move to portugal and they will be here answering your questions in a more social format and, of course, a Christmas quiz. Um, all welcome into that webinar. You just need to book it live. Let me see if I can get that up on the screen for you now and uh, show you what's coming on. Uh, yeah, restoration of independence, of course. Well, let me tell you about that um, while, while um, 
um, I'm on. Uh, the national holiday in Portugal is always dis- celebrated on December the 1st and marks the reinstatement of sovereignty after the period of Spanish rule between 1580 and 1640. Some, like, what, 500 years later, pretty much, uh, nearly. Um, it's, that, that's amazing, isn't it, to, to uphold a, um, a, a holiday and a celebration of a historical event for that long. But why not? It would appear to me uh, that Portugal has a public... This is another good reason to move to Portugal. Um, Portugal has a public holiday at least every month, one at least, uh, per month, and we, we're into one tomorrow. Um, both Portugal and the US allow their citizens to hold dual citizenship. Oh, thanks, Doreen, for pointing that out. Uh, was not the case with the Netherlands, where I was living for the past two years. Another advantage of choosing Portugal in addition to the weather and cost of living again. So, yes, a dual citizenship a bonus there for uh, US nationals. That's great. Uh, did someone say ice creams? Uh, and on me, uh, I'm in, says Philomena. I'll go on then. And uh, Re is here as well tonight. Hi, Re. Um, good of you to come back after Friday night's craziness in the expat man cave. That was a hoot, wasn't it? Um, an evening, to Mr. M, to me. And an evening, uh, Mrs. GW, to you, I guess I could say, um, in return, igualment. Um, so I was going, what was I going to share with you? Oh, yes, the webinar um, coming up on... Um, coming up on Thursday. This is a social and um, it's going to be ask our expats about anything, everything you wanted to know about moving to Portugal, but we're afraid to ask. I think this is worthy of sharing on the screen. Hold tight. Um, Let's see if we can do this without losing you. Uh, Yeah, ask our expats anything about life in Portugal. This is a webinar this Thursday, December the 3rd from 8 till nine uh that's what's what's the, what's wet time um western european time but 8 p.m lisbon time let's go with that um free online event first thursday of every month uh and that so we're going to do it every month so that you can have ask any questions you want to of this team um of which i am a part and absolutely loving talking pe- to people one-to-one about moving over here get a bit of quality time together uh, and um, I've helped one person move successfully uh, from Britain to um, Portugal and helping others with plans to move in the new year as well. And I'm really enjoying that work. Um, it's the first Thursday of every month, the Expats Portugal team, that's me, Astrid and Jerry, invite you to join us with other members of our community who've already made the move to Portugal and keen to share our personal knowledges personal knowledge personal knowledge and experiences with you is your chance to ask questions make new friends and get involved in our growing community uh, this online event is open to everyone regardless of where you live but all with one thing in common and that would of course be portugal a glass of wine is optional depending on your time of day it's always five o'clock somewhere only one ticket required per household we do it via zoom and uh, you'll be emailed the web address the night before so uh, I th- and I think it'll be fun because it, we're going to have one of Jerry's legendary quizzes. We're going to have a Christmas in Portugal quiz. So you can find out more about what Christmas is like in Portugal. Uh, Victoria's here as well. Um, uh, hello, Victoria. Um, great to have you here. Another, I was going to say casualty of the man cave, but it's so great. You would think, wouldn't you, that the man cave might be a little bit sexist and um, exclusive. Au contraire, if I might chuck a bit of French in there. Not at all. It's the man cave vibe. And anyone who's who's up for that is welcome, as is Victoria, who's helped us uh, with a beard judging competition the Friday before last, and then helping us with manscaping and male depilatory products um, on last Friday. And Re, this is... <laughs> although one of our... Um, I think... What can we say about Neil, Re? Um, he'd had probably a little bit too much of the Vino Tinto um, that afternoon and evening. He said he'd been drinking since lunchtime, didn't he? And having a fine time in the Alentejo district of Portugal. And he was very unguarded. Should we say that about him? He was very unguarded um, and very, what is it that when you drink, your inhibitions are lowered. And that certainly describes him to a T on Friday. But Re, you had such a good sense of humor about it. It was fantastic. Uh, the Man Cave is the best show on. There you go. Um, and Sapphira is part of that, of course, as well. That's a fantastic testimonial. Thank you very much. Um, it is, says Victoria. Wow. And I like Gilda's accent. 
could you see, hear it in the comments or do you actually oh you're, you're obviously speaking to her that's fantastic hey go <laughs> says victoria i don't quite know what that means but uh, i love saying it um western european time thank you for that uh, description of wet uh, there doreen and um where was it oh yes uh, safira talking about that um uh, upholding the, the celebration of the independence from the spanish is is celebrating the fact that we managed to, to keep our language well fair enough so i'm not knocking it so far i just think it's fantastic because i guess the longer it goes on the more deeply held it is isn't it like each year you remember it and each year you uh, hold on to it more fondly and dearly uh fantastic okay um man cave is a great way to end the week we 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 you know to be honest with you we don't quite know what we're doing with it the idea of the expat man cave is in these pandemic times where you can't meet your buddies and go down the pub and have a drink to process the week you know because for the for the expat well i suppose it's the same for all expats but there's a there's a blokey thing to do isn't there to go to a bar and talk rubbish and that's a way of processing your week but obviously when you're an expat in portugal you've not just got a week to process and meet up with your pals you've got the week that's also in a new country with its ups and its downs and with its funny stories and so on I like the time when i went to for a haircut and came out completely bald because i didn't get the language right um you know i said th i thought a quick cleanup meant a trim not a complete you know shaving of my entire head which is quite a shock um you know and that was a story i shared in the man cave and so it's a really useful therapeutic cathartic process on a friday night um to have a to, to bring your own booze you know like a, like th that's where this bottle turned up on friday have a drink take it easy and just see what happens, which is what you do, isn't it, when you go to the bar at the end of the week with your pals. So we've done it virtually, and we've done it especially for expats, which is fantastic. So glad you're enjoying that, Eric, and it was great to have you there. I have, I've got to be honest with you. It, it was, um, well, I say that I'm, I'm as honest with you as often as I possibly can be on here. I hope you realize that, uh, oft, often to my expense and embarrassment sometimes. But um, the, 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 the straight-up truth, I forgot what I was going to say now about the expat man cape. What was going yeah, it's, it's that we don't quite know which direction it's going to go in. We see what happens, just like you would if you went to the, the pub or the boozer at the end of the week. We we get there and we see what happens. And our intention has always been to make it at least from 10 to 11. But it was like, I think it was two and a half hours last Friday. It was a three hours the week before that. So something's working. Um, I recommend The Man Cave. It's highly entertaining. I know what I was going to say. And um, why I was saying, I'll be honest with you, it was it was a little bit. Thank you, Steve, for that. By the way, I recommend the man cave. It's highly entertaining. Um, is my little confession with you is I was watching it again today and giggling um, whilst watching um, my interaction with my buddies and how I I, I was laughing uncontrollable. Uh, Eric, it's the best pub in the world. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Victoria is saying. Man cave is a Friday night ritual. I mean, if that doesn't pique your interest, if you've not been there before, uh, do join us live. By all means, watch the replay on YouTube. But the most fun happens if you come along and join in with, with the unpredictable randomness of it um, every Friday from 10 o'clock with me, with my friend, uh, with my friends, uh, Gary, um, who lives in the newly renamed Al Viagra of uh, central portugal and frank nahat persian frank who lives in lisbon who will, he's part of the um ask our expats team actually he's a great guy he's a canadian who's moved to uh, lisbon and um he will be you, you absolutely um, be a, a hoot to talk to about moving from north america to lisbon so check out frank whose details will be posted up soon in our ask our expats uh, group there um just like a wrecking ball <laughs> says safari the friday night wrecking ball that the is is the expat man cave okay thank you so much tonight i hope you found that useful um looking at uh you know uh, re the reason i you know sometimes i think oh my word you know like this is going to be like um positivity fatigue about por portuguese positivity fe fatigue ppf but there are so many great things there are so many awards there are so many wonderful and beautiful things to say about Portugal. And I just sometimes think are people are going to get fed up with this, but actually um, we haven't yet. And for, for many of you, you know, that, that expression, um, 
it's about keeping the Portuguese pilot light lit. So we'll keep talking about it. We'll keep singing the praises of Portugal um, every morning on the Good Morning Portugal show and in the evenings here on the Portugal show. Um, super fun, says Victoria, about the man cave and uh, re giving us a bit of a lull there uh, towards Joel, our man, Sapphira, up in Porto, who I think reluctantly is coming around to the idea possibly of helping a few expats coming this way as well. I'm sure he'll give you the benefit of his opinions. Um, but he's not quite sure, I think, about calling himself a consultant as yet. But I'm still working on him. I'm still working on him. And I'm looking forward to buying you a coffee. Um, I buy you a wine or, or a beer, uh, Joel, but I know that's not your cup of tea to mix my beverage metaphors there. But I'm so looking forward to having having a Francesina and um, a coffee with you up there in Porto one day, as is Frank and Gary, I know as well so thanks um for being with us tonight folks lovely turnout um great questions great comments and um i think um oh look you're not letting me go uh, i'll have to drop by says linda you will um to, this is to the man cave i suspect joel will be an awesome consultant that's what i told him re um no ppf no portuguese positivity fatigue keep it coming will do doreen and uh Sophia says sure um, I'm not sure if that's a consultancy or if we're, if he's going to let us buy him a franchisina and a coffee. Anyway, uh, bon night to you. Até amanhã, see you in the morning for another Good Morning Portugal show if you're up at that time. And uh, we'll be to here tomorrow with Donna Jacqueline, the expat elder, the grandmother of this community. And actually, and interestingly to me, we will be talking about making money online. And sorry, that sounds like one of those awful schemes that gets advertised, doesn't it? But... A lot of people um, who come to Portugal, we were talking about the internet earlier on, weren't we, and, and the availability of good internet and people working from home. And, and, and a growing number of people recognize, you know, it's, it's very unlikely you get a job in Portugal unless you're coming to do a job. And you know, looking for a job here is going to be difficult. And, um, you know, there are many other Portuguese people who, you know, many ways deserve to, to be getting the work here. Um, and us expats, you know, may have a different sort of skill that we do online, We'll be looking into that tomorrow and we'll be looking at other opportunities on how you can create um, some other income streams online, you know, through your creativity, through um, doing this sort of thing, basically. So we'll be kicking that idea around tomorrow night, um, how people perhaps need to diversify at the moment, you know, with, with, with work being a little bit scary, with employment being a little bit scary, income being a little bit scary. We're going to look at how we can support each other locally this we've talked a lot about this you know how to, to build your social capital how to how to live locally that's a really important thing and a very possible thing here in portugal but also we're going to take a look at how you might look at um developing your skills as an online business uh, tomorrow night and hopefully we'll get a few people who are actually doing that um tomorrow night um, and have a bit of a, a Q and a, a clinic of people who make their living online and share a few ideas on how that might be possible. So yes, uh, absolutely right, Re. Employment is scary everywhere right now, no doubt about that. And we need to sort of consider every option, don't we? And it seems that so much with certainly with social distancing, and it's a habit we've got into. So much is happening online now. Let's look at a few of those income generating opportunities online tomorrow night on the Happy Homesteaders. Portuguese Positive News Show with Donna Jacqueline tomorrow night from 10 here in this slot. So take care. Have a lovely rest of your day, uh, you folks in North America. The rest of us over here in uh, Portugal are going to get a bed pretty soon, probably after we've had a couple more glasses of white port. Take care and bye for now. Beijinos abraços. Te já, te logo.